So, what I'd like to do is expand the map a little bit and show you where those, uh, where that decline begins and where the sound is coming from. While you're resizing the um, canvas, Rob, I'm not sure if it's intentional, but you have this scale set to 10 feet per square. Yeah. Yeah, I did do, do that um, because it looked a little bit larger with the tokens. Um, but now I'm thinking, hmm, if you want to move. 35 feet. Let's just say that 10 feet equals 5 feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just divide all the numbers by 2. So basically, we'll still be moving the same amount of squares. Right. Disregard the actual measurement. Mm hmm. Just if divide you, it by I think two. if you want, there's, there's two, um, two parameters you can add, which is the like the size of each square, and then um, the actual like a, distance value. Well, it's like a multiplier, so I think it's set to one by default, and you can either set it to like I think if you set it to 0.5 or two, it'll the scale will stay the same, but the, the measurements will straighten themselves out. How's that? There we go. It'll be on the tab. Um, yeah, I think I got like it. No, it's yeah, it looks like strict. No, it looks like you got it. Okay, I'm gonna use zoom out, zoom out a little bit, everybody. Everything looks like it's on a large scale, yeah. So on the far right, I just drew some zigzags that shows where the decline starts. I don't and see anything. I don't see anything either. Did you put those on the GM layer? <laughs> no. Oh, well, there, there we go. go. Shit. So that's where that hole that Orin saw earlier is? It's not a hole. It's just a part of the terrain that declines rapidly. So it's all loose rubble. And it goes down. Um... How far across is that? About about twenty feet. About f about twenty feet, right? So, in that twenty feet, it goes down twenty-five feet. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and then you hear from the south. Let me put these here. Two growls and stampeding feet, and as you peer southward, you see two black bears, and they're agitated by two blood hawks that are swooping down, pegging at them, and forcing them to run in your direction. The bears are being attacked by the hawks. Right. Time and to make being... a bear friend. It's hard to tell what is causing the bears to run in that direction. I mean, the hawks. Why are the hawks attacking the bears? It's hard to tell. But they're running in your direction and growling and approaching ferociously. So they look visibly agitated. Correct. Like the hawks are swooping down and pecking at them and then flying back up as the bears stampede towards you. Okay. And 
I'm going to add them to the initiative. How tall is the griffin that we're on? I'd say about five or six feet. Let's just say five feet for ease. Five okay. feet above the ground. Um, the bear bears are going to move on the initiative of of six. Winning. And the hawks are going to move on an initiative. A five. I like the wolves. Poison Gray's in trouble. <laughs> Okay, Tarnak, it is up to you. All right. I'm really just not aware of uh, of the just many options here other than an attack. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attack. You should use the um, brown bear, that's black bears, right? Oh, they're black, brown bears, my fault. Black bears. Yeah, you said black bears. Do either of the bears look like they want picnic baskets? <laughs> they want a jar of honey. A boo boo! <laughs> so, uh, what does Tarnak do? Um. Tarnak is going to spend his last key point to dash as a bonus action. So let me do that real quick. So you run head first towards two stampeding black bears? Hey, Tarnak don't care. Tarnak's fine. <laughs> um, I'm going to be coming over here to the uh, hawk and... Um, are they easily like? Are they low enough to be able to to attack? Like they're as they, in, as they're, they swoop down. They're in the air right now. Okay. Um. I will take. A I can reaction. tell you how high they are in the air. I'm just gonna uh, ready uh, an action to attack, uh, the hawk that's next to me as soon as it swoops down low to attack the, the black bear. Okay. <clears throat> it is 30 feet up in the air. 30 feet? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm just gonna, um, ready an action so that I can attack them as it swoops down. Very well. And that ends Merit. my turn. Okay, Bard. All right, let's see here. Um, what's the range on the bow? 60 feet? What bow? Uh, the crossbow? Crossbow. Oh, crossbow. They're about 120, aren't they? Which crossbow? Let me double check. It's a special one that he got. I believe it's still just a light crossbow. Well, there's a hand crossbow, the light crossbow, and the heavy crossbow. Right. right. Hand crossbow. 30 feet. Uh, long range is 120. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move. All right, I'm gonna stand on top of this little hill here and then see if I can pop a shot off at that owl. Let me double check my di or at the hawk. Let me double check my distance. That'll probably be at a disadvantage for range with the hand crossbow. Also, that getting on top of that costs um, 
two movements. 20 feet different. of movement because it's 10 feet high and that's difficult terrain to get up to the top. Okay. Unless I, I can still make jump, it. Right? I just gotta stand right there. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and ready my uh, crossbow for the same one Tarnak shooting at. As soon as it gets in distance, I'll shoot at it. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, Orin. Um, all right, so I see these bears and these hawks running at us. Um, I reach down into my component pouch at my hip, and I pull out a cricket, and I crush it in my fingers while, um, in can or while drawing in the air uh, some uh, runes. And I speak a word of power, Jaslape. Uh, and I cast a spell that I like to call Nomish Nap of Numbing. Ah, it sleep. should. Yep, it targets. Oh, let's see. It should be able to target both bears and both uh, hawks without also hitting Tarnak. And I put to sleep 21 hit points worth of things. 21? So what is your um, total range on that? I know that it's... It's uh, uh, 90 feet, and then it okay. targets everything within, a, within 20 feet of a point that I select. Okay. Eight. So you can do right there. <laughs> How does that work? Do you just roll the two d8 and the lowest hit point one gets hit with it? That's I've always wondered that with that uh, spell. Yeah, no. it, so it's five d8, and then starting with the creature that has the fewest number of hit points, it uh -huh. goes to sleep. You subtract those hit points from your total, mm -hmm. and you keep going until you can't put anything else to sleep. Ah, you said you start with the lowest. Yes. Yeah, yeah start, start with, with the lowest. things with the fewest hit points. It'll probably be the hawks. Wait, if they're flying and they go to sleep, they're probably going to wake up very quickly. Although, you have to choose because the hawks are 30 feet in the air. Oh, that's true. If it's a 20 foot radius, you can just target in the middle and get everything. Yeah, I was, it's above the bears and below the falcons, or the hawks. Okay, so like... Right there, but kind of like 10 or 12 feet into the air. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And what, what comes from that? point of uh, um, so like the whole, the whole of that area like bursts into like uh, a little bit of like really fine dust that quickly blows away because of the wind but that that dust affects everything in the area and makes it drowsy okay awesome um, I forgot to mention another thing which if one of you can look up with the DMG it's a environmental effect. Heavy winds. Ooh, that's an effect shooting things. Um, and it's also going to affect the the hawk's flight. So, if one of you can look that up while I resolve, who is asleep? Working on it. Orin's spell puts both of the hawks to sleep, but neither of the bears. Okay. And the hawks kind of slump over and begin to fall towards the ground. Alright, so strong wind imposes disadvantage on ranged weapon attacks and perception checks that rely on hearing. Uh, it also extinguishes open flames, disperses fogs, and makes flying by non-magical means uh, nearly impossible. So your campfire goes out in a puff and of smoke. And those birds must land on their turn. They're about to land because they just fell asleep. <laughs> um, uh, that'll do it for me. Now, 
Would a sleeping hawk take falling damage? Depends, depends on how high. high. Yeah, it yeah, depends, depends on, on how high. high and, like, I've seen birds fall, like, after hitting a second floor building and, like, not die. So, I think a bird falling wouldn't hurt it too much. But, I guess if it even takes one hit point, it wakes up automatically. Because in general, there would be light, so, you know, with all their hollow bones. So they can I'd generally say, mitigate their, their falling. Yeah, I'd say probably like, what, a d4 damage, and then that would wake it up? It's 1d6 well, per 10 feet by the rules, but it's, you know, the DMs Oh, really? Are, I would yeah. say we would change that to 1d4, yep. considering they're really light. They're creatures. light, yeah. I would say d4. I would, I would say would... even less than a d4. I'd say like a d2 minus 1, but I'm biased. <laughs> well, this is what I was going to say. I'll have Oren, because he's the spellcaster decide how potent his sleep is on the affected in the fact that does it drift them to sleep as they cascade gently not taking any damage and therefore staying asleep or do they plummet taking damage but waking up because they take damage um i'd rather not plummet them i'd rather lull them to sleep very well then i'll have on their next turn They'll move 10 feet forward and onto the ground, but stay asleep and take no damage. And then I say, No tears now, only dreams. <laughs> I could use my mage hand to smother one. <laughs> okay. Bellinor. So we do have a, a, a minor problem. What's that? Um. I've got my reaction set to attack a bird as soon as it gets into range. You're allowed to not actually use that reaction. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can oh, choose. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was you automatic. Just pass yeah. on your action. And when your trigger you comes up, you, you say, I choose not to do it. You can't reassign it, but it's still there. Okay, I... Actually, I think I will take it because on the... The attack would be at advantage because of it's the sleep. sleeping, so you're gonna get a good hit. Um, yeah, I was gonna say uh, last time that we had something that was asleep, it was an instant coup de gras, correct? Well, that's because we weren't in combat. We're in combat now, so it's not a coup de gras; it's a advantage. And yeah. If you hit it, it's at max max die roll for damage, right? Uh, um, I don't think so. I'm gonna I say no it's because it's a moving, a moving object. object. Fair enough. So. What I will say, Tarnak, if you want to take your reaction, as the hawk drifts to sleep and cascades down in front of you, you can whack at it with advantage. If you don't kill it, it will wake up. If you kill it, then it's worth it. I still can take my bonus action um, after attacking, correct? Because I get one bonus action per turn, right? Only in your turn can you take bonus actions. Correct. I thought you could. Oh, okay. Sure about that. I don't. The only thing sure you can do. Options. The only thing you can do on your on your uh, off turn is reactions. Even I'm, if you um, prepared your action. All you're readying is the reaction. It's all you're readying. You're not. You're not you're delaying not your turn. They don't have delayed turns Ooh. by the. Uh. No, I know, but uh, I was under the impression that, or I seem to remember earlier uh, during some other session before that uh, we did something similar to that, uh, or someone mentioned something that uh, you could, that you had a bonus action per uh, turn. Uh, so the player's handbook says you can only take the bonus action on your turn. So I guess it depends that, on how Rob rules taking that's a pretty reaction clear. off turn. I'll just say it that does say. It yep, does it say that uh, you can choose when to take your bonus action unless uh, bonus action's timing is specified. For example, um, uh, I think the, that means like the thinking like uh, offhand attack with monks because the so it states it says with that it, where it's like it can only be if done you attack, after you attack, dramatically use a bonus action to attack with your offhand right after you attack normally. Yeah, but there's also some effects that don't specify after an attack, so you could take that bonus action before. Uh, for example, with the Paladin, their Divine Smite, they can use their bonus action to uh, infuse their weapon with Divine Magic and then make the attack with uh, extra di di damage dies. 
Right, but I think that the in this case, if bonus action says you can only use it use it on your turn, but then bonus action says unless specified at another time. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, and then general. and that's what's throwing me off because it's I would, your monk. it has specific because timing. I would think that because the monk's bonus action is more specific than the actual bonus action clause, we would go with. Uh, the monk's yes. ruling of uh, you can attack. Yes, I agree because happen. basically the specific always outrules the general. the general. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Mm -hmm. So I'll say that you can do your attack and your one bonus attack. Alright. Which I mean, considering he rolled 21 HP and it brought down two of them, I feel pretty confident in being able to break. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to kill them. Or kill the haunt. Okay. Roll your first attack with the with advantage. Well, it'll be on their turn as they're falling, correct? Or do you want me to just do it now? Wait, what is which are you talking about the flurry of blues bonus actions? No, just a straight up attack, uh since I readied it and then the unarmed. Flurry attack. of blows gives you two bonus uh two bonus attacks. But uh, normally mo monks can get a f one free bonus attack for nothing. Well, for a bonus action. Right. But that's not this case because that only happens when you use the uh, attack action, which he's not using. Which he's not using, he's just well, using he's a reaction. <laughs> Isn't You're, you're readying a reaction. The action is it, readying an action is a reaction, which is only quick snapshot, like, uh, you know, my trigger is if an enemy steps away, I'm going to attack them, so it's... I can see what you're saying, but it's technically for only reactions. But I mean, ah, when you ready gotcha. an action, the action you're readying is the attack action. Uh, sounds like no. Yeah, it, it, it's... I see exactly what you're saying, Tarnak. It's very, very... it's very interesting. It's an interesting debate, that's for sure. I think it's DM Rob rule. Does readying an action say that it's a reaction? Or an attack action. It's well, for example, what, what's a what's an attack of opportunity? If you guys attack, if a, if a monk attacks with an attack of opportunity, that's you can use your reaction, right, to attack something. Right. Right. But you only get one. But that's attack. not that's not your attack action. That's yes, just no. you getting a free it attack as an opportunity. Right, because occurs, you're taking the action. You actual can either take attack. your reaction or ignore it. So you're taking your reaction or ignoring it. All right. It sounds to me like it's just one attack. Your reaction attack, you can only fit one attack in there. So Tarnak, go ahead and make Wait one advantage minute. attack. This is all moot because you already used your Step of the Wind as a bonus action. For, for, that uh, is true. That for is dashing true. That all is, the that, way over here. Yeah, that is moot. My bonus action is done. That's a good catch, I forgot about that. Well, there you go. R O on D and D lawyers. <laughs> and um, I mean, yeah, just just uh, for future purposes, yeah, I agree. Um, under ready, it says you can take the ready action on your turn, so that you can act something else out later. So you wouldn't be taking the attack action; you would simply be attacking. So then, uh, in that case, yeah, you wouldn't Cowboy. be able to do an unarmed attack. Okay. So go ahead and roll your one attack with right. advantage. One second. Twenty-two. I'm not gonna lie, was hoping for a crit. <laughs> that will hit. All right. Six. Nice. Okay, six damage slices it very deeply along its underbelly, but it wakes up and caws as it falls to the ground. Still alive, but barely. But it has fallen. Yeah. All right. I'll put it there. I might as well 
put this one here and just say that it's asleep. That one's asleep. Okay. Uh, my turn. Yes. Eleanor's turn. Oh, right. No, it's heavy winds right now, isn't it? Oh. Strong winds, yeah. I will just jump off the griffin and then climb up to here. And... That will be it. Okay, Vitari. Uh, the, the winds... Could you guys clarify? It said um, weapon attacks, um, ranged weapon attacks. Is that right? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, not spells. So that wouldn't affect my. I wouldn't think it would, but. Um, no, you can okay. still do fire bolts and magic missiles and everything uh, like normal. Okay, so would the eagles that have been grounded with sleep, would they be, they're considered prone, I imagine, right? They're on the ground? Yeah, they're prone. Yeah, so that's going to be tough to hit them. So, um. What are the bears doing, uh, Rob? Are they still charging ahead now that they're not being goaded by the birds? Yeah, because it's all happening so quickly, and they've mm -hmm. already been attacked. They're kind of just viciously Momentum. stampeding forth without regard for their surroundings. Gosh, I hate to... I think the bears are really in this fight um, by their own volition, you know? I mean, let's face it, bear meat is pretty tasty. <laughs> and we are in the hostile land. It's true. There ain't no druids among us, we're good. Um, let's see the range 60. I mean... It's a big map. Yep. Yeah, this is uh, still the second largest scaled map that we faced. First okay. largest, of course, was where we had that giant battle. Oh man, that was sweet. So, DM Rob, I'm going to um, uh, spit on the ground and rub it in with my toe in a circle signifying a variation of the grease um, somatic component and I'm going to cast grease in the path of the bears the range is 60 feet and it's a 10 foot square so I'm going to try to put it in the path of the uh, the bears so they, they would run into it if you will gotcha just uh, point to where you want it specifically with a ping well, you could also just uh, draw a square. Uh, yeah, I was going going to. Uh, or that. I just want to see Sorry. where. So each square is five feet or ten feet or what's the? Yeah, each square is five feet. Five feet. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's exactly. That looks good to me. Right about there. Okay. That's money. And uh, yeah, that's my turn. So you grease up the rocky terrain in front yeah. of them. Yeah. Okay. All right, Darvin. All right. I guess I will. Take aim at the bird here. Okay. That one is not prone because it's awake, which means right. it's better for you to shoot at. But still, there are strong winds. Still disadvantaged. Right. But it's next to another ally, so I will uh, be able to get sneak attack if I can hit it. So, are you shooting with a longbow? I am. Okay. Orin, I gave... Oh, I thought I did. I thought I gave Orin 40 bolts. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to give... Oh, is that what you were giving me? 40 I, 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 have, I have it tracked. Oh, okay. So 
I'll just use the actual number unless you want me to use. I don't mind. No, no, that's fine. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can't actually use sneak attack even if, if you have disadvantage at all. Correct. Uh, that's correct, actually. So you won't be able to gain sneak attack due to the, the heavy winds, even though I'm already here. Very well. That's good to know. I did not remember that. The only way that it would that he would be able to gain it is if you, uh, is if you implemented the flanking from the DM, dungeon master's guide. No, no flank. Which yeah, you stated that in the forums. That's the only way it would be able to happen though, because my advantage on him would negate the disadvantage. So, uh, Darvin, you're shooting with like longbow, right? Right. Disadvantage though, because of the wind. Or is it a short bow? Longbow. Okay. Go ahead. I got that in the, uh, after looting the previous thing. Right. Whew. Nice. That will hit. And take it down. So, despite the strong winds blowing, Darvin notches an arrow and describe how you kill the hawk. I take aim, trying to be aware of the wind and make a shot, hitting it on the ground, pinning it. All right. Tulakaju. Uh, that was me, I think. Yes. Um, he's the fire grenade. See? I see. Uh, I still don't have his character sheet on my uh, thing, by the way, on, on my uh, journal. Hmm. Oh, put it in handouts, maybe? There we go. Now it's in your journal. I got it. Okay. I got his bio, anyway. I don't see his stats, but. Uh, Oh, I there it is. It it's it's written in there. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. So um. I moved behind the bear trap afterwards as well. I hate to use a once a day. It's a pretty powerful ability. Um. So he's gonna use. And his multi attack to make two ranged attacks, which doesn't say what his ranged weapon is. Is it a bow of some kind? He doesn't have a ranged weapon on him at this time. Ah, okay. I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna move forward and I'm going to. Has Merrick gone yet? This, uh, this round? Yes. yes. Who hasn't gone this round? Was he Just last? Poisa. Okay, then he's going to stay by Poisa, and um, he's going to... We can't really help him, he's not melee, right? Then I'm going to move forward to Belenor and uh, take the dodge action. Uh, you can't move that far. It's 10 feet to climb up. Oh, the difficult train, of course. Um, for the record, Rob, you never uh, stated the range on uh, Tulukaju's uh, range attack. His spell? Yeah, it's the uh, same as the Scorching Ray spell, second level evocation. Okay, so I'm going to have him stand right there, and he's going to take the dodge action. Okay, awesome. I'll add a symbol there. So the bears are pretty dumb, but I'm going to um, have them roll a perception check to see if they notice and then try to avoid the grease. They've got a plus three perception. Um, Batari, why don't you roll an arcana check 
to kind of contest that of how well you disguised the grease on the rocks. Arcane skill? Okay. Yeah. Doesn't look good. Nope. I should have cast it on him and moved forward. I didn't think they would do that. That's interesting. So, actually, I think, what is the, does the, um, strong winds disadvantage to wisdom perception checks involving hearing? Only hearing. Only hearing? Okay. Well, at least we can't yell commands at each other. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, no, that's only desert. These this hazards one? are pretty interesting. The what? The hazards in the DMG. Oh yeah. The one bear roars, stands on its legs, and turns towards Tarnak. It makes an attack with its claws, swinging, and then bites viciously. So it's two attacks. I'll do claw, then bite. Claw hits. Okay. You take five slashing damage from a bear claw across your chest. Mm-hmm. Uh, that looks like a miss. Darn it. That's a hit. <laughs> That's a hit too? Okay. Yeah. Right. I think Tarnak's good luck is gone. Maybe. For six Ouch. damage. Mm -hmm. You'd think our leader had more uh, foresight into his actions <laughs> in combat. I assume you guys would all be even come charging in. <laughs> have the high ground over yeah. here. We, can we have wait. a tactical advantage back here. Watch those bears go charging into those pillars, and you guys are just knocked prone. That no would pile be of rubble. This one comes charging forward. Um, let's see. there. Does it avoid the oil of the grease? Yes, it saw that with its ah, perception cool. check, so both of them did. One of them stopped, stopped, reeled <laughs> on Tarnak. The other one stampeded forth, kind of sniffed at the ground as it ran, and steered to the side. Can I use my reaction to shoot it? Sure. That's what you had said, right? Uh, actually, I think I said the closest eagle. Or hawk. Okay. Thanks for being honest. <laughs> no worries. In that situation, I guess, in hindsight, you would have said the first threatening creature to come near me. That's true. Let me see. Okay. It's actually going to double move. And set off that bear trap. Yeah, you didn't sniff that, did you, bear? So how does that work? Darvin. What's it coming to me? The bear trap. Yeah, it's it's gonna have to make a um, 
a save uh, dex save. I have to hold on. Let me pull that up there again. So let me get this straight. A bear was running up to a hunter and got caught up in a bear trap. That actually seems an expected outcome, not a surprising outcome. Uh, the save is a DC 13 dex. I already found it first, thanks. Nope. I think it's funny that I'm sure Darwin got a bear trap for just about every other creature except a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an outdoorsman. Well, and a bounty hunter. You know what? It's multi-purpose. You almost caught that innocent woman in it. <laughs> oh, that was that close. Was, that was amusing. Uh, 13 dex save is what it Yeah, he, he, he rolled a 9, so he failed. So what happened? Fix uh, 1d4 damage and stops moving. Okay, so he was charging, steered clear of the of the um, grease, but then set off the trap and took three and damage. It, it but, can't move away from the trap until it escapes it, and it, each time it attempts uh, with a DC 13 strength, uh, if it fails the attempt to get out, it takes one more piercing damage. Okay. Now, the final hawk here, can it make a attempt to awake or uh, it's No, it's just a, it's asleep for a minute. For a minute, so ten rounds, okay. Unless it takes damage. Correct. Right. Okay. All right. So then we're the bear it, could attack me if I if it had an attack. I'm still within range, you know, for its next turn. It double moved, so it couldn't attack. For its next turn. Yeah. Next turn it can. Um, so Poisa. Poisa. Which uh, square do you want me to use? The left or the right one? Because she occupies mm -hmm. twice as much um, space for some reason. Just uh, the right one. Okay. He, he doesn't want to get too close, so she'll just move here and then shoot twice with her bow. Let's see, d20 plus 4 to hit. This is her first attack. Fail. And this is her second attack. Seven. I don't think that's a pass either. Yeah, neither neither heads because of the, the wind. strong winds. Messing up with her aim despite her being a wind genasi. Haha. <laughs> Interesting. Karnak? Um, actually, now you hear more growls coming from the east and up passing over the um, decline you see crawling two creatures do I recognize what those are um, anyone can make a nature check to identify either you said they're coming from that crevice, you said? From it's the in decline. It. Yeah, they were climbing up over, probably disturbed by the <laughs> sounds of battle. Yeah. Bellador didn't even, doesn't even no. know what nature is. Is that a monster? No, no, it's probably if they're a from, rock. If they're from the underground, I get a higher roll. This is my default nature of 18. It's not from underground, though. It's just like a little valley or something. Fair enough. You identify one of them. Which one would you like to identify? The top or bottom? Let's go with the bottom one. Okay. You identify it as a wormling or young um, bronze dragon. Oh, oh snap. Boss fight? 
my brethren is here. <laughs> Wait, bronze? Um, but what is a bronze? Is a bronze is a uh, me that's metallic? They're good. No, metallic dragons are evil. No, that's oh, wait, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 we can't, metallic. we can't assume anything about anything on this planet. Yeah, this is a totally new set of rules in this world. Well, if I recognize my nature role, like, what, do I know if these bronze dragons are good or bad? Do I not know? What do I know about bronze dragons? All dragons are bad. Perfect. All dragons are bad. That's, 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 that's that actually makes it easy. That makes it so simple. Um... Is it big? Is it like a young one? Is it flying? Is it crawling? Is it bigger? It's young, small. Um, not small, but in the sense of the game, but small in the sense of a dragon. Sure. Um, and it's flying, hovering. Um, but we still have the wind thing, right? Yeah. You do. So, so it flew. Up to kind of over the top of the that incline, to so that it became level ground with all of you to kind of see what was happening as the other creature was crawling up and is on the ground. But you can see that the dragon was fighting against the wind, or actually kind of with the wind up, spreading its wings to gain the advantage on the height. But then we'll probably plummet back down. Is the wind uh, blowing? Which way is the wind blowing, by the way? East to west. Okay. So it's blowing the, towards the us from them. It's an offshore breeze. Um. So, so is the dragon gonna... taking up one space or is it multiple? One space. Okay, so and it's just a five foot, five foot. Thing. I'm going to roll initiative for both of these creatures. I speak draconic. I do as well. Obviously, I, I do. <laughs> and how you do? Yeah, I think Tarnak should be concerned about speaking, not getting eaten. Three of you speak draconic. That's pretty cool. You can all have conversations about the others without them knowing. <laughs> oh, I just, do. Y'all just took the wind out of my sails with a draconic. I also speak Genasi. Yeah, but nobody cares about Genasi. Yeah, that's proved less helpful. <laughs> not, not even Rob. He killed his own water Genasi. <laughs> hey, you never saw a body. His body's water. Where are we gonna find it? <laughs> I saw him in my eye. Was that for the dragon eye. or the thing that we don't know? The dragon. Damn, that dragon's fat. It's still got its baby fat. It's still cute. Damn, Rob is rolling well for initiative today. Right? I know. Uh, you're rolling well, period. You hit uh, you hit Tarnak twice with both hits. Yeah, it's been almost impossible. I'm gonna have to start getting. Creative. I mean, like, yeah. When was the last time Tarnak has been hit twice? Like the first session or something. Yeah, the first battle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Tarnak's turn again. So here we go. Yep. Yep. So, give me one second to make a move. I come up over here, moving five uh, feet away. Away? Yeah, uh, 35 feet away from uh, the bear. So, you'll provoke an opportunity at sack. Ah, damn it, yeah, you're right. Go ahead. Okay. You sure you want to? Yeah, I'm not taking disengage. Okay. So he'll make one attack and he'll claw at you. Plus three to hit. It's a miss. 
miss. It roars, swings, but you tumble as you speed away. I knew my luck god hadn't completely abandoned me. And um, as I'm over here, I'm going to throw my bag of ball bearings uh, at the center of this square. And is that 10 feet as well? Yes. Yep. Yes, they cover a, uh, a 10... Uh, cover a level area that's 10 feet square. One more time, where? Right there. That's correct. All right. And that will end my turn. All right. Merit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and drop a crossbow into that bear there. Now remember the wind, you still get a disadvantage. At this point he's getting disadvantage, uh, Reed. Including range and everything. Fair that. Depends on which bear you're shooting at. Oh, okay. Either bear. Yeah. Either bear is disadvantage. He drew the line to the one by the trap, though. Yeah. So, oh. I mean, at, at this point you guys can long range uh, anything at this point. Because it's going to be disadvantaged regardless. I don't think I hit it. Yeah, sorry, Merit. That's going to uh, have a similar effect of poises. The wind is blowing so strong that the bolt kind of just flutters and then flaps back in the wind in the opposite direction. Sticking in my foot. Um, is there anything else, Merit? Uh, no, that'll do it. Okay. Oren. Alright, so, as I'm doing this, I'm saying, No, Oren, we don't want to sleep in the trees. The trees don't seem safe. <laughs> um, I'm going to, uh, hop down from on this rock and, uh, pull off, or pull out my, uh, short sword and a dagger in my offhand. And let's see, that's 10 feet diagonally down, I have 15 feet, and I'm going to take a stab at the bear. That's going to be 20 feet with the difficult terrain. Uh, coming off the rock? You can jump down yeah. 10 feet, right? Hmm, I just see it as taking more more time to descend but okay well whatever it hey have really a make an athletics in check my... or something if you want yeah go ahead make an athletic athletics check to jump down without uh or slowing your stride yeah I'm more of an acrobatic I could I do it that way sure sure uh ten ten on ten feet I'll give it to you alright so I like I hop down and um brought my dagger and my short sword as I'm doing that and land in a roll and I come up and I stab at the bear with a 23 against its AC. Yeah, that'll hit. Uh, for the half 15 to help me. damage. For, um, I'm sorry, 12 damage. For and then 12 I say, damage. I'm a gnome, damn it. <laughs> I think um, at this point, Darwin knows you're a gnome. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so 12 damage, piercing. Yep. Yep. Plus the uh, three he had earlier. Yes. Um, how's the bear? Can... Um, visibly bleeding. And from right. the foot that is caught in, and your stab into its neck. Um, I'm gonna use my uh, engage bonus action to uh, move uh, five feet away from it, like that. Uh, uh, wait, I hate you. Now I don't get my sneak attack. 
Don't uh, worry. That's okay. I don't get bear claws to the face. Do you even have um enough okay. movement for that? Uh, He's got his bonus action well, to disengage. To actually move fa uh, five feet away. Though. Yeah, this is fifteen, yeah, and this is another five. five. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I even added uh, five feet going down, so I actually counted myself moving twenty feet to the bear. Um, but if I have another five feet of movement, I'll take them. Sounds good. Otherwise, I'm done. All right, Bellinor. I will. I will hop down, go to its flank, and then I will whack it with my quarters. Eight. No, I don't think that hurts. No, sir. Okay, I activate Flurry of Blows, and I go for one of my famous kicks. Nope. I go for my second famous kick. 20. The that? second one will hit. Okay. It hits for 4. And then I use... That'll take him, take him down, actually. Oh, okay. okay. If that takes him down, then I will just run back up here. Um, hey Merritt, if you have to go, it's fine. Tarnak can take it over. Okay, yeah, I, I can play out this encounter, but after that I'll need to, uh, take off. Well, this might still take a while with the, with the, uh... Okay. Uh, it might just show as long as that last boss battle. Yeah. Alright, well then Tarnak, don't get me dead. Is, is everything okay, Merritt? Yeah, everything's fine. Um, I have to send my book off to the uh, publisher tonight, and my wife and I need to do a uh, final run through before we do it. That sounds relatively oh, okay. important. Yeah, so not a bad problem to have everyone safe, healthy, and just great. But I just got to make sure we get it done. All right. All right. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Tarnak guys. I will Happy see you holidays. Soon. Uh, see you next week. Good luck. Good luck. Absolutely, guys. My my slate is pure, you know, clean and everything next week. So I'll be here for the long haul. All right. All right. Can't wait. Cool, cool. We'll see you then, man. All right, guys, and I'll listen to the episode as soon as it's up, Rob. Awesome. User disconnected from your channel. Okay. Um. Let's take one more break. Let's do the uh, long one now. Let's wait till. Uh... Oh man. What is the it? The dragon. I wanted to fight the dragon. <laughs> well, we, we'll just uh, break until uh, the, the hour, the start of the hour, because I gotta make some food real quick. But, um, Bellinor, you just finished your turn, yep. so it'll be Batari's turn when we come back. Hey, uh, Rob, can you give me control over uh, Merit so I can uh, study his stuff uh, while we're breaking? Sure. Where are the Where are the char character sheets? They're here. Glitched to me last time, Rob. I just hit refresh. They'll repopulate. It happened to me when I was DMing the other night. Hmm. Okay. There they are. Okay, Tarnak, you should be able to control Merit's character sheet. No. Yep, I got that. Thank you. Oh, nice. Cure wounds, that's useful. 
Okay. Oh man, Hunter's right. Mark is badass. See you in 20. Hunter's Mark is really good. I don't know why, but I find